Good game played at Emirates and I believe all Arsenal fans are believing that we took a game to them though they really came out as the winners of this game of football. Something that I'm not worried about because I believe that Ten Hag six months in just six months at the club I believe he's really doing a lot of good work for the club and I believe if at all he gets backed we are going to go ahead and really become champions and I believe if United had everyone in the field of play you know what would have happened but I'm not a person who really uses the if clauses a lot because I know if clauses are really excuses given out by the week but we are not weak we've gone ahead put out our game just a little sleep in the last minute we considered a goal and obviously against crystal palace the same thing really happened on to manchester united and obviously such things will come in through in this rebuild but we shouldn't give up we should just go ahead and really believe that we are having the right manager the pinnacle of this club then the glazers should be out getting new owners and then ten hug gets backed thank you guys for watching in through Smash like button, comment and share. Rock and David is my name. We are here to do the player ratings of this game of United versus Arsenal. Let's go to the goalkeeper, David De Gea. I think his ball distribution most times was really on point. He had a very beautiful game. There is no goal that really crossed his line that you could go ahead and really blame him for. That's it because he pulls out a very good save around the 75th minute when Odegaard plays into Edinketia and he was almost in the six close to the goalkeeper. It was a close range. He saves it and keeps us in the game. It was not until that Scott McTominay block that really went or that interception that really came to not happening that resulted into Trozard exposing Arunad Bisaka on a 2v1 situation that resulted into Zichenko getting a cutback that finds Odegaard and Odegaard really does that that ball that really finds Nketiah and Nketiah hits it at the back of the net to make it 3-2 in the dying minutes and I believe if you had some 10 minutes to play would have really gone ahead and really got out something of this game of football but it was really impossible because we really lost the game of football in that way so I'm giving David here a 7 out of 10 because there is nothing he did wrong there is nothing he did wrong I've read someone that he's responsible for the first goal because he gives the ball to Aaron Bissaka let me tell you this in this game of play whenever you're in the wide area and they give you that ball you have to act well so this is where we miss diego delo however much bisaka had a very good game but we miss we miss diego delo that's it it's a fact that we have to go out and really embrace that you are missing diego dalo so i'm giving De Gea a seven out of ten let's go to aron bisaka the right back he played very well, but there are certain things that are really unexcusable, according to me. That goal we concede, the first goal we concede, it's because of him not keeping his man or marking his man, that is Edin Ketia. He should be marking that post and he should be so much vigilant on who is behind him. He doesn't do that, we concede. That's it. So, the third goal, he's not to blame because he's exposed to a 2v1 situation, but to this one, I mean the second one, sorry, the first one that levels the game, we gave it to Arsenal without working hard because the cross was not all that magnificent, you get? We had numbers in the box, but Bisaka didn't keep his man. That is the problem. And that's what you really go on and really lose games if at all you don't really be so much clinical. So, and observant at your opponent. So, Bisaka... 6.5 out of 10 for me. That's it. 6.5 out of 10. Luke Shaw had a very good game against Bukayo Saka. I've seen people talking about that Saka roasted Luke Shaw like a turkey. I don't remember any game. I don't remember any moment Saka roasting Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw remained very much confident. He was stable. He was not turned around. That's it. You get? But the problem he faced was that he was really facing two players at the same time and Rashford couldn't track back. That was the problem. So I believe we would have done better, especially on really tracking back, especially because Rashford should know it is, even if it's Ten Hag, that ever much Rashford is the man who's really doing all that, but he should track back. He should fight back. This is the reason as to why Sancho and Anthony were taken off the game of Man City in the first half where we were losing 4-0 at Etihad and brought on other players. 
why is Rashford given an allowance of not tracking back? He should track back. He should track back because this is a game of really hard work. You get? That's it. So I'm giving Luke Shaw a 6.5 out of 10. That is it. And for the first goal, he does a very good interception that really finds Rashford into that position of play. Bruno plays him in. Rashford net mugs. Thomas Partey. Verghorst makes a very good run that no one is talking about. But how are people watching football? For Rashford to shoot that ball, it's Verghorst who makes that run. And I believe I'm going to come up with that, that photo tomorrow and really show it to you very well, the importance of Verghorst in the first goal we score. Now, after that, we score that first goal. Luke Shaw had a very brilliant game. 6.5 for me because I believe he was above average. He was above average. Then we go to Rafael Verani playing very well, defended very well, never put a foot wrong. He was all there for the team, but obviously we considered three. But I believe those two goals are not, none of those goals is all about our central defense. That's it. So I'm giving Rafael Verani a 7.5 out of 10. I go to Lisandro Martinez. A man who really scored his first goal for Manchester United, becoming the, the seventh Argentine to score a goal for Manchester United. He played very well, scored a goal, very much good and important in us building from the back. That is Lisandro Martinez. He comes in and plays very well for Manchester United at, away at Arsenal. And it looks good for us because he's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. And obviously played very well. That is Lisandro Martinez and this was his game by numbers. 83% passing accuracy, 75 touches, 7 long balls completed, 4 interceptions, 3 clearances, 2 aerial duels won, 2 grand duels won, 1 shot, 1 goal, and obviously scores for United for the very, very first time. That is, that is Lisandro Martinez, and I'm giving him 8 out of 10. That's it. Coming in and re-leveling that game in the 60th minute, that was unbelievable for him. Short as he is, he really sacrifices his head to put it on the line because Odegaard was raising his foot to clear that ball but he said I put my head there to save my club and leveled the game so I'm giving him 8 out of 10 we go to Scott McTominay Scott McTominay you know he did what he had to do that's what people don't understand because you can't ask him to be a Pedri you can't ask him to do what Casemiro does even what Zidane Ik border on the field of play, Scott McTominay can't do it because for him, he did his interceptions, he fought the physical battle, he, he, he won the aerial duels. But obviously, we are back to square one. As Casemiro was out, we couldn't fight a battle. That's it. So, Scott McTominay, 6 out of 10 for me. Ericsson, um, to me, I believe it's high time we brought in another midfielder to play in the pivot because I've been saying this for a very long time. However much Ericsson has gone ahead to give us very many assists, but I believe he can't win the physical battle. He can't win the physical battle. That's it for me on him. We concede the second goal because of him. You get, he lets Bukayo Saka go onto his strong foot and gives him freedom to shoot. That's it. Because Luke Shaw shields him from the goal area, but he does a turn and really shoots that ball in the back of the net. And I believe when Fred came in through, Bukayo Saka never really went ahead to shoot that ball towards our goal. Even before he came on through, that is, Freddy, Saka had gone ahead to gate another, another shot at us that hit the bottom post. So it shows you how he was a threat because that space was not covered. So to me, I believe Ericsson should be played as a central attacking midfielder. That's it. We need another another player who's really resilient, playing into that double pivot with Casemiro to see to it that we really win that game of football. That's why you remember in the game of Man City, it was Freddy and Casemiro playing the double pivot. They played there very, very, very well. So I'm giving Ericsson a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Then we go to a player called... Um, we go to a player called who? I've done Scott McTominay. I've done. Let's go to Bruno Fernandez, right? Bruno Fernandez, to me, I think was a little bit sloppy. 
he never put his impact onto this game. However much he was running everywhere, but I felt like he doesn't do what Odegaard does. And I think today, you've seen why I've always told you that on any day, I put Odegaard into my team ahead of Bruno. However much Bruno has numbers, but Odegaard is really doing exactly what a central attacking midfielder should be doing. That's it. That's what he's doing. So I believe we need a player like Ericsson to play in that position. If I told you getting a player like Frankie De Jong or Enzo Fernandez or who to play in that double pivot alongside, alongside Casemiro because we need a player who does that work better. So this is where I go in and I really say Bruno, his game by numbers were as follows. 92% passing accuracy, 34 touches, 22 passes completed, 6 out of 7 final third passes completed. Then he had 4 ball recoveries, 2 out of 3 tackles won, 2 ground duels won, 1 key pass and 1 assist. So to me I believe 6.5 6 out of 10 for me. That's it. That's what I'm giving him because in games like this, this is where you need to administer yourself and really announce yourself that here yeah, I'm Bruno, I'm here to win this game of football. And obviously he didn't and that really costed us a lot as a team of Manchester United. So I believe would have done better. So not until Bruno knows what he's supposed to be doing for the club in that position because he might be knowing it but he might be lacking the ingredients to do that. <laughs> that means we should get in someone else to get that job done for us. So that's why I plead for Ericsson to be played in that position because he does a better job. He knows what it means to dictate the ball. He's better, he's better at passing that ball. And uh, I believe Bruno does it, but he doesn't give us the control that you want. You get when that game is when that game is one nil, what you need is when you don't have Casemiro, you need your calm or central midfielder like Bruno. To dictate play and really reduce the tempo. Get that ball, play around with it with your players around you. But Bruno can't do it. Each and every time Bruno gets that ball, he's thinking about going in for hello would pass or to go forward. But we lacked game management in this game. That's it. You know, the reserve of managing this game of football, knock around those passes because we are having good players who can pass that game of football. So that's what we needed. But to do that, you need a calm who can do that very well, of which it's not Bruno. <laughs> That's it, because he was supposed to win this game of football by really leading by example, but he didn't. So I'm giving him a 6 out of 5. 6. 6.5 out of 10. Let's go to Anthony again and again. You know, <laughs> when I say these things, people say I have an agenda on Anton. I think the honeymoon is over. That's it. We've played 20 games in the Premier League. I think he has missed like three or four or five games. The honeymoon is over for Anthony. It's time for seriousness. If Anthony is doing things at Sunderland that are supposed to be doing at Manchester United, then we have to really put you onto the spot. Why do you get the ball and not run diagonally? You get run across the field of play. Look at Bukayo Saka. You get Saka is doing things that Anthony can't do. Anthony has a better skill set than Saka. But he cannot do what Saka is doing. You get? That is really bad to hear. So, I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 for me, for Anthony. Let's go to Marcus Rashford. Scoring his ninth goal in his ninth game for Manchester United. That is great. Great form for the player. And uh, I believe he put us ahead, scored the most important goal of the game of football. And he deserves all the credit because that was really self brilliance. It was really a solo effort, according to me. Net mugging a player called. Net mugging a player called. Thomas Pate, it was really a very wonderful skill from the player of Manchester United, and he did really a very good, wonderful job for that. But I believe in the second half, he commits a lot with the ball. That's my problem with him always, because in games like this, you just need to capitalize your moments. Your football intelligence should be up there to save your day, because you don't need to do hard things. Get that ball, knock it around, and move. 
pass and move, pass and move, you'll break down this back four of Arsenal. So, the first goal, he was lucky, space was there, he hits that goal. After hitting it, goes back over the net. And I'm giving Rashford a 7 out of 10 for me. 7 out of 10 for me, he deserves. Let's go to Veghorst. For Veghorst, and those that have not gone ahead, that have really gone ahead to downplay his efforts at Manchester United, I'll leave laugh at you. Then you've not watched this game of football very well. Now, let me show you something that most of you never saw. And I've not seen people talk about it. After netmarking Thomas Partey, who creates space for Marcus Rashford to find space at goal? This is Vaghorst. Vaghorst makes a run that takes away this defender. Because if this defender stays here, he will catch up on Rashford and block his shot. But Vaghorst diverts or diverges these players to this side. Rashford gets shooting space. I think this shows it to you very well. You see where Veghorst is? As Veghorst makes a run here, this is Gabriel Magales and others. They are really looking at this one. Then Rashford tries to aim that shot. So it's Veghorst that provides space for Rashford to shoot at goal. So I'm giving him a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Not bad for him. Just trained with the club for like 2-3 days. Playing into his second game, one of the biggest games. No chances created for him. And people are criticizing him. Guys, don't forget that United rarely creates chances for its number nines. And that is really going to be rectified later until the Ten Hag style of play is impacted. But right now, looks like you are always in a graveyard shift. If at all you are that man playing into that position for Manchester United. So I'm giving Vego a 6.5 out of 10. Freddy came on through and played. I'm giving him a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, Ganacho, 6 out of 10, had nothing to do and that game of football. Ten Hag, man, I'm giving Ten Hag an 8 out of 10 because going to that game, we're not having Dalo, we don't have Casimiro, we don't have Anton Martial, and you fight until the 90th minute. That's when we concede the winning goal for Arsenal. Oh, very good calculations made by Ten Hag. And remember very well, when I, when I was reading a prediction, I told you that my only trust is in Ten Hag. That's it. Because I trust in him coming out with the perfect permutations to win this game of football. And obviously, if he had Casemiro, Anton Martial, he would have won this game of football. That's it. He would have really gave Arsenal a game that no one has ever given them at Old Trafford. Because they're going to have to admit that no team has ever given them a tough time like us at Old Trafford. Meaning that we were out here with three players out. But we managed to give them a game. So, Ten Hag, 8 out of 10 for me. And my man of the match is Lisandro Martinez. Scoring an equalizer. Obviously defending very well. No goal. You're going to go ahead and re blame on him. I believe he does the best for the club of much sense. So, guys, thank you very much for watching it through. Tell me what you think about the player ratings of the players of United as it went down at Emirates. Us losing 3-2. We are playing again on Wednesday. That is away at the City Stadium in Nottingham in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. The good thing is that Casemiro will be back. I believe even Ma Anton Martial will be back. So to say to it that we will really prepare for the next game we're going to be playing on the weekend against Reading. So we're having two easy games. That rotation is going to be called for, meaning that by the time we play Crystal Palace, the players would have rested enough. Even Casemiro, you know, it's like a blessing in disguise that he has been playing every game of United and has not been rested. So what I believe is, he comes into this game of football and he plays and he doesn't play. He has gotten close to a week off because he last played on Wednesday. Not so. After playing on Wednesday, is it Wednesday or Tuesday? He last played on Wednesday. Now he's going to play again on Wednesday. So it shows you that that's another week off for him, meaning that he is fresh and obviously getting his engine ready for the next tally of games for Manchester United. So guys, thank you very much for watching in through. I sign out for now. See you later. Good night. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If all goes well, I'm returning with Ten Hag's reaction to United losing to Arsenal at Emirates. Bye. Three goals to two. Bye-bye. I'm out.